What's up there, YouTube? All right, let's get to this uh, another little discussion today about Ryzen, and I've I was I've been watching some videos on on YouTube today about you know different things, uh, the all the different tests fluctuating, how the single core performance isn't nearly as good as it should be. Uh, and one site, I don't want to actually bring up their name, it's a gamer site, so, you know, they said that, okay, they said that if you're going to be using your, the CPU for content creation for encoding, that it's kind of pointless because you will probably get better performance out of a GPU, a better GPU for performance, so you're not really going to be using the CPU during, like, H.264 encoding. That's just untrue. Because I have a CUDA core GPU in my system, and I did some research. And even if you have two Titan Xs in your computer, your CPU will still be pegged at 100% when you're encoding out of Adobe Media Encoder or something like that for encoding. So maybe with some software, it uses only the CUDA cores. But from my understanding, from what I can tell from all the encoding that I do, no matter what it is, if I'm encoding, 90% uh, of the time it's through Adobe Media Encoder out of Premiere to Adobe Media Encoder, which is using the Mercury Playback Engine. When I use the CUDA cores, CUDA encoding, my processor is at 95%. When I use software, my processor is at 100% on all 12 cores. So it's not like a little, you know, like it's, you know, going to be not using the CPU just because you have a GPU. So a Ryzen chip in my computer would help me even with a GTX 1080 in there. It would still help to encode faster because it still uses the CPU. Premiere and Adobe products do not offload that much onto the CUDA cores. They offload quite a bit compared to software only. If you're on running software only, yes. But even running software and hardware, it's still using your using your CPU. It's still using your CPU. Otherwise, when I encoded, if I took but click Mercury Playback Engine, the CUDA core encoding, my CPU would be at like 30% and the GPU would be maxed out and blowing hot air out of it. But that doesn't happen. It still uses all the cores on the on the CPU, or actually, it uses. Um, I I read a, a bunch of information about this today. It uses up to the first eight cores. I think it uses um, uh, something like sixty percent of the processor, even if you've got even if you have the thing. After that, it drops to twenty five percent. So it's still using around seventy five percent. Of, the, of your CPU, no matter what freaking video card, no matter if you have two 1080 GP, uh, TIs in there, it's still going to use a lot of your CPU power to encode. So this notion that if just because you have, you, the, almost like you're better off getting a, a 7700K and using GP, uh, GPU, that's not true. My, uh, a multi-core processor would smoke a 7700K with a 1080 with two 1080s in there, and for encoding H.264, it'd still smoke it because the because it doesn't it still uses the CPU for multi-threaded for a lot of things. And Adobe doesn't even do that great on multi-threading. Uh, Adobe Media Encoder does okay. It does a little bit better. It does peg all the processors. So I'm going to show you right now. Get back to my Premiere project here, and show you uh, encoding. So this is my system is a GTX 760 CUDA encoding. So I'm going to go export media. I'm going to show you the processor. Now if I pick, I'm just, this is from yesterday or whatever when I made this video yesterday. We're going to H.264. I picked, let's just go to the preset right here because I recorded this in 4K. All my videos are recorded in 4K. And I'm going to say 4K. We're going to do... 4K, YouTube, 2160p, 4K, right? There we go. 2160p, 4K, frame sampling, everything, use maximum. We're going to leave it exactly the same on, on both things. VBR1 pass, 40, 40. Everything's exactly the same, right? We're going to click Q, and here it is. I had done it earlier just to test it and stopped it, so let's clear those off. 
uh, remove. Yes. Okay. So here it is. Down here at the bottom, you can pick Mercury Playback Engine GPU Accelerated CUDA. So it's it, if it finds your video card, if it finds your GTX, your NVIDIA card in here, it will accelerate it. GPU acceleration, right? So that's turned on. Renderer. So it's turned on. So let's see. Let it get loaded up. And it's saying... Let me turn this off. And it's saying 33 minutes, 34 minutes, right? 34 minutes to complete, 36 minutes remaining. Now let's let's let me bring over my ta my thing here. I hate it when I bump the monitor. I just had this off to the side. CPU is at 90%, 93%, right? So my CPU is at 93%, and I have what else? I've got this. I've got this thing running. So here's my GPU clock. You can see I've got a GTX 760 in here. Yeah, I need a new GPU. It will. It does perform better. It does perform better with a newer CPU with more CUDA cores. That's a fact. It'll go from, you know, 35 seconds, about a 30% improvement. So this should take a, instead of 35 minutes, it would it would take about you know 20 minutes. But it still uses a ton of GPU. Look, CPU's dropping down to 80%, 92%, 84%, 92%. Still going up. It's because I'm doing other stuff. And so it's bringing it up to 100%. Okay, I don't have to sit through this whole thing, but are all cores, you know, are all cores running up there? Yes. All cores are being utilized. All cores or it's pegging all of them. Some must peg me more than others. See this one here? It didn't drip dip down as much as that one. Same with that one. So I'm, I'm imagining these are the physical cores aren't dipping. The logical cores are dropping down. Okay. So now I'm just going to move this right here. Just set it right here. Let's go back to the screen here. I don't have to sit here and encode this whole thing. So we're going to stop it. No, I don't want to finish. And I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to reset the status. Reset, right? And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click software only. Okay? Now it's going to use software only. So it's not using the CUDA core now. So no more CUDA cores. It's using software only. So it's only using the CPU. Let it get loaded in and start encoding. You can see my CPU right here. It's starting to go up. Once it gets to the time, see what it's doing is loading. It's loading the audio and stuff. It's loading the stuff, so it's taking a little bit. Okay. Delete. It's an email from Travelus. Two hours and forty-six minutes. So it's it's going up a lot, right? So it's basically go away. All these things, this annoying messages at the bottom of my screen. Nick Driftwood. Okay, so it's at an hour and 40 minutes, but what's the CPU at? 95%, 98%. It's dipped up exactly the same as it was for for CUDA core rendering. So if, if somebody says that it doesn't use your CPU, that uh, uh, more cores and more threads on a CPU doesn't help with rendering if you're going to use GPU, GPU rendering, they're they're wrong unless there's some software I don't know about that will only use the GPU and not use the CPU. Let me know what that is. I'm not doing anything. You saw this. I did this right here. I haven't not edited it. It's right off the thing. Now you notice there's not as many dips. See how high up it is because it's software only. So it's going up to 98% full blast. It's really pounding the heck out of it. That dropped down to 99%. It's because I'm moving my mouse around 100%. It's really, it's really, it's really killing it here. So, yes, in software it would help, but also in hardware it would help. So I don't need to sit through this whole thing, but I just thought I'd bring that to your attention. If anybody says, "Well, the the if you're using a CUDA core, you don't need all that many cores," yes, you do. You still do. 
if unless you're just using what I don't know handbrake or something to just re-encode video that you've already encoded I don't use handbrake to video re-encode video I've already encoded here's the video I've already encoded I edit it and then I export it and I export it right here with Adobe Media Encoder CC 2017 because that's what I do for a living that's my job what am I gonna re-encode it as something else and come back and then use handbrake makes no sense now also, when I was looking at some uh, web pages and some information, they said that uh, one of the thing on PC Gamer, actually, the Asus motherboard I used for testing originally shipped with a BIOS that didn't perform all that well. Scores were slower than what AMD demonstrated the Ryzen event. And an updated BIOS improved things by about 10%. That's pretty good. So just a simple BIOS update improved it. Just they had three weeks with the bio to get the bios out there so a quick that's a huge gain from a firmware upgrade especially for a platform that's about ready to ship but i have to wonder if there's room for further improvements of course there is of course there's room for further improvements it got 10 percent in just like a in a in just a two or three weeks time from a bios update allow them allow us to mess with the men, memory timings and stuff a little bit more and we'll be getting even more uh, updates it's just obvious that this is a new platform and so anyway so to, to wrap this thing up basically what i'm saying is if you encode video of any kind whether you have a, a, a gtx 1080 in there or you've got a titan x in there or you've got a whatever I've got a 760 or whatever the heck it is, if you're using CUDA cores, you still need a fast multi-threading processor. With more cores, the better for encoding video, for encoding H.264. So this idea that, oh, well, there's no reason why would you even do that because you're offloading it to the CUDA cores. Yo, really? Then if I'm offloading the CUDA cores, why is mine at 100%? Because it still uses it. Because Premiere still uses, and Adobe products still use the, your, your CPU. So even with a, G, a, a fast GPU in there, you're still better off with multiple cores for the thing and when for encoding. And when the games and the, and the BIOS's updates pick up and make it better, as I showed you that they've realized they got a 10% improvement just from one BIOS to the next. Do that a few more times and they're, and they're caught back up. I'm telling you, this is this little single thread performance thing is almost irrelevant it's really it's ridiculous that they're even having this conversation i mean i'm not trying to be you know mean about this and i get it and i don't think that i don't think that amd should have um tried to be sneaky at all or anything they should have just came right out and said this is going after the 6900k this is going after the eight core and six core and 10 core cpus you know the, the workstation CPUs is what we're going after with these first chips. And that's what they're going after. And they're not going to perform as well in games, but they're going to still perform really well in games. Because, I mean, come on. It gets 122 frames per second and, and, uh, and Geo mean average CPU P on PC Gamer. But the 6950 gets 166. Oh, no, it's getting 40, 40 frames per second more. Who, who gives a flying crap? It's getting 122 frames per second. It's getting 122. Ask any uh, consoler if he'd like to get 122 frames per second. Hell, even the even the 7600K overclock at 75 frames per second. That's better than 60. They're they're happy to get 60. They're over there with their PlayStation 4 dreaming of getting 60 frames per second. We're complaining that it's getting 122 instead of 140. Really? Come on. This is ridiculous. Stop playing games. Go out and do some work or something. It's ridiculous. I love playing games. But 122, 130 frames per second, and you're getting 10, 10 frames less in the you know than, than another. So what? It's 10 frames less. You're already getting 122. And it's not even optimized for it yet. It's a brand new chip. Not optimized for it yet. They're running basically one step above beta BIOSes on the on the on the motherboards. Give it a little bit of time; it'll catch up. 
And if they sell more and and sell a lot more of these chips, then the 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 game companies and stuff will say, "Hey, we've got a bigger market. We should be." Right now, all they do is we've got our big market is Intel. So let's just make everything really great for Intel because that's who the biggest market is. But if their market got bigger for AMD, they'd be like, hey, let's make this thing for AMD. That's a large part of our market. These people are buying our games. Let's make it run better on their system. That's why they make PlayStation games to begin with. That's why they make Xbox games for to begin with is because there's a market for it. If there's a market for it, they'll make it better. So... I wouldn't really sweat these numbers, really. I'm not really sweating them at all. I could care less. I I care more about multi-threading, encoding H.264, all that type of stuff. And I want to be able to jump in Battlefield and play a game now and then. And that's and if I'm getting 120 frames per second in Battlefield, ooh, or whatever, if I'm getting 100 frames per second, good enough for me. I don't care. I could care less. Oh, and somebody else was somebody else was saying. Um, Somebody else said, well, at 1080p, we, we, we did it at 1080p. Look, if you're running a GTX 1080, you're not playing at 1080p. They even say, why would you get a GTX 1080 if you're playing at 1080p? You should be playing at least 1440p, at least 4K. So, okay, so that's what they play at. So see how it does there. Is the is the CPU dropping front? Is the CPU holding it back at there? No, it's peaking it to the card's bottleneck. That's what that's what they're supposed to do. That's that's fine. You know, I don't, I don't. That's like that's like saying do, when you export, do, how fast does it export in SD? Who cares? I don't export an SD. I, I export a 1080p or 4K. I don't export an SD. Why would I export a 720 by 480? Why would I do that? Oh, it exports faster as SD. So, I don't export it SD. I export it. I export it 4K and and 1080p. Nobody cares about SD. Why would I do that? I'm out. Hey, like this video if you like it. Subscribe. Hit me up. Let's talk about this. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that it should, you know, that that uh, 30 more frames per second is a big deal when we're talking between 120 and 140? You know. Is that a big deal? Is 20 more frames per second a, a deal breaker for you if you're already getting 120 frames per second in a game? Do you need that extra 20 frames per second? Is it going to really change how you play to get 20 more frames per second? You know, if that's the biggest deal, is that your biggest thing? Or do you, or are you like me, you think, well, I'm getting 120 frames per second in games and I'm able to use it for my, for work. I'm able to export my videos and get those actually out faster. So I have more time to game. Are you like that? Or, or, you know, how is it? What do you guys think? Hit me up, comment below. Let's talk about it later.